Hey, you know the little fact about uh, Oreos there is that they are Martian Manhunter, a.k.a. John Jones' favorite food. Makes him go crazy. They have to keep him away from him or he'll freak out. Really? Oreos? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, with that in mind, we're gonna make Oreos! Done! <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, yeah, all right. You could just, you could just have that. But why would you do that? Would you, would you, we could just make our own chacos. Because technically, that's what Martian Manhunter now loves. It's chacos. What are chacos? Chocolate sandwich cookies with white filling in the middle of them. That sounds a lot like Oreo. You know Maybe. what? No, we're just gonna go make some chacos. All right, let's make some cookies. For the dough, you're gonna need one and one half cups of flour. You also need one cup plus one tablespoon of sugar, three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter, three quarters of a cup of dark cocoa powder. Now, I happen to like the dark because of the deeper cocoa flavor you get, but you're also gonna need a little extra later on, and you'll see why. You'll need one egg, one tablespoon of water, one teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of espresso powder. It's optional, but I recommend it. Also, lastly, one teaspoon of salt. Okay, let's talk about the filling, which we're going to make way more than what we'll need, but you can save it for later. You need five to six cups of confectionery sugar. Why the range? Well, we're looking for a certain consistency, so we'll add sugar until we reach it. You need a quarter of a cup of water, one cup of vegetable shortening, and it doesn't have to be scooped like ice cream, but I did that. You're also gonna need one 0.25 ounce packet of unflavored gelatin. And finally, one teaspoon of vanilla. And what will we mix these ingredients in? Well, you're gonna need a couple of bowls, one for dough, one for filling. You'll need a mixer. Trust me, it's going to come in handy for this one. You're also gonna need one small pot or other small stove safe vessel. You'll need either a flat bottom glass or a can of comic pop soup. The rubber band is optional. You'll need a couple of measuring spoons for cookie scooping. And as always, my trusty rubber spatula. Oh yeah, don't forget about some parchment paper as well as some wax paper. And you know, a baking sheet and at the very least a cooling rack. We are finally ready to make some cookies. So you're gonna grab your room temperature butter. Yeah, it's room temperature, right? You're gonna drop it right in that bowl. There we go, get all that butter goodness right on in there. Yep, perfect, yep, okay, it's good. Now grab your sugar and we're gonna put that in on top of it so we can cream them together. So once that's in, we're gonna grab our mixer and we're just gonna start slowly and then speed it up. This is basically gonna add some air to the butter as the sugar cuts through it like a batarang through paper. It'll make it nice and light and fluffy. You'll see it change color. You'll know pretty much when you're there. There we go. So now we're gonna add our salt, just like that, and then grab the espresso powder. Now, yes, it is optional, but I really like it because it helps to bring out a really strong chocolate flavor. So I'm gonna scrape my bowl down a little bit. You know how I like to do that. And then right back to mixing. Once those are combined, you're gonna grab your egg, crack it open, and add its awesomeness to the party. Then you're also gonna grab your tablespoon of water, pour that right on in there, and follow it up by that awesome vanilla. Then we're gonna give it a mix. It'll look better in a minute. There, we, that, that, that's what we wanted. Now, finally, we're gonna add the cocoa powder. I'm gonna start slowly here with my mixing, otherwise you'll bathe yourself and the surrounding area in a fine cocoa dusting. And while that might sound okay, I, I didn't wanna clean that up. So just start out slow, speed it up, and then it'll look like that. Now it's time for the flour. Now, I'm not going to add it in all at once. You could, but again, I don't wanna make a big mess. So I'm gonna do it in two batches. And eventually you'll end up with a really stiff dough that looks like wet dirt, essentially. I kinda just wanna eat it now, but we're gonna bake it. So grab your parchment paper and you're gonna line your pan with it. And look, if it doesn't cooperate with you when you put it down, that's okay. Just you know, grab your soup can, grab your glass, just weight it down, show it who's boss. It's us, by the way, not it. So remember those measuring spoons? Well, I have a teaspoon and a half tablespoon one. I'm gonna show you both how they make the cookies based on what you have and what you prefer to do. So let's start with the teaspoon. 
So when I go into the cookie bowl, I'm gonna draw up enough to make it like a heaping teaspoon, essentially. So it, it's something kind of like that is what I'm looking for here. I'm gonna take it out and I'm just gonna ball it off in my hands. By the way, I cannot make a perfect sphere, so uh, don't worry about that, it'll be totally fine. So there you go, put that right down on the pan. And now let me show you with the half tablespoon. So with this one, instead of heaping, I want it to be pretty flush to the top of the spoon. So something more like that. All right, pull that out, and do the same thing, ball it up, and then you're gonna put it right on the pan. But let me show you how close and what we're looking for size-wise. That's pretty much it. That's what I want. Now again, you can make these any size you want, but this is what I'm looking for right now. So we're gonna continue this process until we fill up the sheet pan. Now, what's great about the parchment paper is it's gonna help the cookies not spread out too much, so you can leave, I'd say, about that much room. So now we need to flatten these, otherwise we're gonna be making Oreo orbs, which, by the way, I'm gonna claim that one. So remember our soup can and our wax paper and our extra cocoa powder? Well, we're gonna need those. Trust me, you're gonna need the cocoa powder and the wax paper. You know what? Let me just show you why we'll need that. So let's say I had my clean soup can and I wanted to press down my cookie. So just gonna push it down there, nice and even, and ta-da! It's like the greatest magic trick I've ever done, and uh, it's just cause it's stuck on the bottom. So if we instead take our wax paper, and we wrap it right around our Comic Pop soup can, there we go. And that's where that optional rubber band can come in. You can use it, you can not, that's totally up to you. I just like the additional wax paper plus the cocoa powder, which here it is. Dip that right into there, get a nice dusting on the bottom. And this helps to create an additional barrier between the can and the cookie. So now I'm just gonna press that down right on there. Try to use as even pressure as you can because you want the cookie to be the same width all the way around. I'm shooting for somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. Give or take, I'm not gonna break out any sort of measuring implement to find that out, just the best I can do. So these cookies are gonna go into a preheated 325 degree oven for anywhere between 18 to 20 minutes. Definitely keep an eye on them because you want them to be crispy, but you don't want them to be burnt. Because if you burn your chacos, the only thing you can do is just send them into the sun. Okay, while the cookies are baking, we're gonna make our filling. So we're gonna take our water and our gelatin and we're gonna bloom them. Basically, it's gonna get a little thicker. Then we're gonna take it, put it into our pot and put it on the stove. Let it simmer until it's clear. Pull it off, let it cool, and then we'll go and make the rest of our filling. Which starts with our shortening, which is not ice cream. D don't, don't make that mistake ever. Just put that right in there. Look, I know right now it doesn't look super appetizing, but trust me, it, it's gonna be good. Let's just get that all, I, I have to get it all in there. And don't forget, this recipe is gonna make quite a bit, but this is one of those things where I can just keep it in the fridge and you can make more chacos essentially throughout like a week, couple of weeks, whatever, but the filling is ready to go. I just don't like really reducing the amount of gelatin because the packet's so precise. So for me, I just make additional. All right, so I creamed my shortening down a bit and now I'm gonna start adding in the powdered sugar. Now this is where I'm looking for a very specific consistency because technically you can make it a little bit looser and it could be something you could use probably in a cake. But for Chacos, I'm looking for something that's a little bit more dense, a little bit more like the uh, name brand sandwich cookie that I'm trying to mimic. So I'm just gonna add this in a little bit at a time, just testing the consistency as I go. So at this point, I'm gonna grab my gelatin. I'm thinking about a pretty good place, so now is the time to add that in. It's cooled now, definitely needs to be cooled, but not cold, because otherwise it'll set up. But as long as it's cool, you don't wanna melt your shortening. By the way, this stuff smells bizarre. If you've never worked with gelatin before and it smells weird, that's what it's supposed to smell like, but it won't taste like that. So now I'm just gonna start mixing that in. Just wanna get it all combined there. There we go. I'm gonna scrape the bowl down. You know me, I love scraping the bowl down. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar because at this point I feel like this is not where I want it to be, but that's why I had the extra. See how it's, it seems a little dry, it breaks a little bit, but it definitely forms sort of like a dough does. Again, it's gonna be to your taste. I'm looking for something very specific. All right, so my cookies are ready. Look at them. So I'm just gonna put them here. I'm gonna move them to my cooling rack and I'm good to go. There they are but we're not done yet. 
So now we're gonna make our sandwich cookies. Now basically, mine are pretty organic looking, so I went ahead and I sized them up. So right there you see actually two of each. Now I'm gonna grab yeah, probably about that much. It depends on what you're looking for. You want single stuff chacos, you want double stuff chacos, you want the incredible quadruple stuff choco, that's entirely up to you. That's what's nice about this. You have total control over this. All right, so then you just squeeze it down so the filling comes out to the edges. Mm, there's our first choco. So basically, we're just gonna continue this process, a process that clearly John Jones would never make it through because he would have completely lost his sanity at this point, having consumed all of the chocolate cookies, all of the dough we had left over, and all of the filling that was here. And there we go. All right, now let's go prove to those jerks over on the couch that a choco is way better than the Oreo. All right, there we go. We wow. ate chocos, guys. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, take that other name brand sandwich cookie. I gotta tell you right away, these look better than name brand sandwich cookies. Well, they are bigger. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Technically, you can make them whatever size you want. This is the size I made them. Go ahead. All right. Everybody grab one. Okay. Don't go crazy on me now. All yeah. right, ready? Okay. Let's not let these cookies slide. All right, ready? Yep. Mm. Yep. Well, I would try to cookie all over my mouth right now. So, already. Now it's a win. Time. Um, mm. I'm actually not a huge fan of our name brand chocolate cookie, sandwich cookie. No. But I like these. Ooh. I really like these. We used our dark cocoa powder and our instant espresso in here. And trace these cookies all the more chocolatey. They taste as good as the cream that you crave from the Oreos, mm -hmm. but there's a little more vanilla flavoring in this one, which I kind of prefer. We made Chacos. I think we've done the Martian Manhunter proud, so I assume any minute he'll be arriving and... Yeah, and bursting through the wall. Yeah. There you go, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you can give this a try. And if you do, let me know. Send me a picture on Twitter, or if you do it on Instagram, whatever. Let me let me see what you guys did. A few of you guys have done that, and I absolutely love seeing what you guys come up with. I'm gonna go now with these. No. No! no.